Yes, I think that is. It is for me. I've heard you use the term character armor, or I've seen it written because I've, I've, I went through your book. Can you tell me about... It's um, called body armor. Body armor. Yes. And that is when people are really tight, mostly all over. And very often, the tightness is around the heart when they had experiences that hurt them very much and they do not want to feel it or talk about it and instead tighten the muscles there. And it, in the end, it looks really like an armor. Mm. Nothing, okay. The breath does not go there. The body does not move there. And the area is hard. This is Sarah again. It's like a shell or a shield. It can be like a turtle shell on the back or a shield across the front of the rib cage. Mm hmm. And one of the things that Marion has done, this is Cassie, is connect the sort of different regions of the body having to do with their different functions and um, that tension or um, armor. Like, can you describe that more? Yeah, for instance, when we have been hurt emotionally, somebody has. Uh, you know, if we had a relationship and we got very hurt in this one, we have it behind the heart. And that gives us a lot of information, the area behind the heart. Or if we have a children being uh, mistreated a lot, hit a lot, or have been molested, there's a lot of tightness around the hips, around the, the gluteus muscles. And very often these muscles are quite big, and bigger than even the shoulder muscles, because people try to protect themselves from something that happened to them, even mm-hmm. if it doesn't happen anymore now. Mm-hmm. And that, is, that is the area that is most most visible to us. But then there's another area that we are interested in, this is around the neck, when people are tied around the neck. Very often these muscles hold back sadness. People who don't cry, especially with men, you know, men don't cry. So you should feel the tightness there. But with women too, they um, said, you know, when mother said, you you are a good girl, you don't have to cry. And they try to hold the crying back. And later on, they need to cry, but they don't. They have no way to express it because they feel they shouldn't. Okay. Now I have another question from um, Paula in New Zealand. A lot of people seem very fearful to let go of their armor or to breathe fully. How do you address the fear? Uh, I don't really address the fear. I just know the place where fear shows up mostly. And that is at the diaphragm area. And if I go just under the ribs, and put my hand there. Usually, you feel a lot of tightness there. And working there and releasing some of the areas, the tight areas around the diaphragm very often eases the fear. And so there's there are fears and emotions coming up, and I know that you have, um, that your method is not psychology, and yet there's a psychological influence. Can you tell me about that? Well, people have these these feelings, and usually when they come up, they can handle them. You know, they will cry, and they will say what, what hurt them if they, if they become aware what it was that hurt them. But if they cannot handle them, if whatever comes up for them is too too hard to handle, we refer them to some some psycho- psychology, some people who will work them, work with them in a different way. Yeah. Because we are not trained to do that. All we are trained to do is bring out in them what they have put away. Mm-hmm. And also, too, we always respect the holding. So we go up to the, when we find the holding in the body, we come to meet it and, in a sense, just be with it and not try and push through it, but just bring it 
to awareness. That's right. So it's not forceful at all? Not forceful at all. No. And this is Sarah, and I would just add into that, you know, in the example that uh, Paula gave uh, about what would you do about the fear, it's really we just work with the body, and if if the body changes and relaxes, usually the fear relaxes or goes away on its own. I mean, it's not something we have to do something about. Do something about. Right. It is, you know, or, or the person may need to hold on for a while longer. So we just kind of bring it up to consciousness, and then the person has a choice. Uh, sure. Whether to hold on or to let go. Or they can talk about it. Mm-hmm. That is, of course, the greatest help when they start talking about it. And that, that very often even handles the fear, just to have somebody listening to you, being with you, while they have the hands on the place where mm-hmm. they have feel the fear. Hi there, my name is Nina Wallander, and I wanted to talk to you about Layers of Health. Layers of Health is a free online community dedicated to investigating holistic and alternative health options. These options can include physical health, mental and emotional health, business health, as well as your spiritual health. So you can join me as I discuss your health concerns with various experts, mentors, and leaders in their fields. And these interviews are offered for free live as well as during special Encore presentations. But if you find one that is particularly interesting to you, you can also purchase it. So you can join me at www.layersofhealth.com and I'll see you on the calls.